Um, the, the, these are players that uh, first for Ted is that he's a player that um, contract was coming to an end, and at, the, at this point in the year we're not a contending team, and part of the management's job is managing assets, and so we felt that uh, we should trade him for uh, uh, for an asset, and, and we, that's what we did. <clears throat> um, Ted's been good for us. Um, and you know he's he played on that top line, and he made plays, and he's had some success. I think uh, we had a couple of teams, well, more than a couple, three or four teams after him. He's had some success in the playoffs, and he became a, you know, a valuable type of player to add. Did you feel the third rounder with Teddy Purcell was the best you were going to do, or was, was there a temptation to kind of wait a little closer to the last? Season? I don't. I mean, you know, you, if you're re referring to maybe other deals that were more returns. Uh, you know what? It was something that I felt I had to move on, and uh, and um, we decided to move forward on it. When you uh, took this job, I don't know if you thought you were going to be in a position where you're going to be trading Justin Schultz. You might have been thinking, why not? You know, might be extending this guy. What sort of contract would I do long term? Sort of a, an interesting year for Justin. How many suitors were there? Well, he, he I wasn't sure about Justin. We gave him a one year deal. Um, and in defense of Justin, I mean, he, uh, he didn't play well in the last little bit, and I know he's, there's a lot of critics. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of players that have been booed, um, and, you know, I can understand why fans boo players, uh, but that go on and have success elsewhere. So um, we had a player in Boston, Dennis Weidman, that we had to move him because for some reason or the other, he... He, he, he fell into that category, and he's had success after that. So it happens, and and uh, but to your to your question, <clears throat> um, did I think I would be moving him? Uh, I didn't think about uh, at the time when I took the job, the time that we made some, we, we extended him, for example, for a year. I didn't think that I'd be. I, I didn't dismiss the notion that I might be a seller at the deadline. So anything was possible. Um, it's the first time in 10 years that uh, that we've been a seller. I've been a seller. Um, it's a so it's, it's a little disappointing that way, but um, but you know what? We had some we had some housekeeping items to do, and I say that uh, with all due respect to these guys, but with expiring contracts, and if you're not going to move forward with them, you got to move them along. When we talked to you a couple of days ago, you said you didn't expect to necessarily be having conversations about core pieces at this particular deadline, but anything can change. Has anything materialized in the way of bigger deals? Anything that you've uh, gone down that path at all? You know, a, a little bit, but I, my thoughts remain the same from before. Um, one of the things that, that that goes on at these deadlines and the time leading up to the deadlines is that there's a lot of discussions that take place uh, not necessarily for the deadline it's for the summer or the fall but you, you really have to exchange ideas exchange thoughts where your team's going um, talk about certain scenarios and uh, so I, I, I feel I've we've accomplished quite a lot of that um, so th that stuff you just don't hear about that stuff um, so um, but to your question, no, not really. Not, not, like, my thoughts remain the same on, on, on uh, kind of the larger stuff. But. Was there any thought of putting the two of them in the same field? That stuff was on Twitter. Yeah, well, no, there's a lot of stuff on Twitter. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you August, or was there a thought that you Well, I'm not going to respond to that, Jim. Um, there, there were a number of teams that, that uh, came after both those players, um, notwithstanding the, the media outcry here on uh, on Justin like he he has he has value he moves the puck I know he doesn't defend well he's he was caught in a lack of confidence but anyway I'll, I'll stop on I'll was, stop on that no was, was stumbling block always having to pay, pay half the contract pardon me was there, was there always a stumbling block Pittsburgh say okay you have to pick up some of the well um I, I I wouldn't call it a stumbling block no no um I, what I can say is that the, the, the teams that were inquiring about him were all capped out or close to it. So any of the discussions we had on, on Justin were with, with that, re retaining that salary. Is, is this Flora's draft pick? 
it well, it, it, there's, it's, it, there's, there's kind of two options on two picks, one of their own and, and one that they've acquired. So we'll know at some point in April, and it's gone from Anaheim to New, uh, New Jersey to Anaheim. So uh, it's a little complicated, but there's two options on the picks. We're going to get one of, of those, either it's Florida's or I think Minnesota's. You know, we're getting at Justin Schultz. This is a player that came in, he was highly sought after. He, he started in the American Hockey League and just tore it up. Like, what, what did you see happen to this player that everyone was so after and so excited about? Well, he, 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 does, he does have a lot of um, skill. And, and the, skill, the skill that he has is, is uh, I call it transporting. And the distinction I, I, between transport and moving for me, moving the puck versus transporting, is I think an elite offensive defenseman or an elite kind of specialist can, can, can transport and move and do all those things. Transporting and skating with it, moving it is skating and, move, and moving it. It doesn't mean Justin can't do both, yeah. but he, he has that ability. And so in, in certain situations right now, I mean, he can help teams. That's why we had some teams after him. Um, where did it go wrong? I, I don't. I can't tell you. I didn't watch him closely enough when I was wasn't with the organization. Um, I do know he was highly coveted. Um, I saw him in college. Um, defending in college wasn't as important, um, just generally speaking. So you know, like, like players players learn things, and and maybe he got a little bit too much too soon here, and and the, the defending side of it didn't come. You can defend positionally and, and by stick and. That's what that's what our staff tried to do. But you know, having said that, he's still young, and and um, you know, we wish him the best where in, in Pittsburgh and, and and afterwards. But I don't have the whole history of him where he went wrong. I I wanted to evaluate him. We gave him a one year deal, and now we're here at this point today. Peter, you said yourself that this is kind of a new role for you, and in terms of being a seller, does that also? kind of slightly alter your approach in years previous? Are you kind of sitting back at this time feeling more calls, or are you still as proactive as you were when you were a buyer in Boston? Well, the first year in Boston, we, we weren't necessarily, Sorry. yeah. That's, that's, um, and most of my time in Ottawa, we were, we were buyers. But we, in Ottawa, we did some deals, like lateral deals that we thought changed the complexion a little bit. Um, I've now forgotten the question. Uh, my question was, do you find yourself still being proactive? Oh, yeah. You're the seeker, or are you sitting back and fielding? Well, it? You, you, you know what? You have, to, you, like, you have to get out there and find out where the market is, find out where your players sit in relation to other players, and then you get a sense of, to your question earlier, you get a sense of where they should probably go uh, and when they should go. Um, I, you know what? I just I, I like to have conversations with guys, with GMs. I like you know, there's there's the actual moving of players, talking of moving of players prior to this deadline, but there's the other conversations I spoke of where you you know you want to get a good sense. You just got to be active and find out how the market's moving. And there's more right now with it, kind of with the number of of uh, teams at the cap that are contending, and uh, the number of players. There's the um, Sellers out, out, out outnumber the buyers, so there's there's a little bit of that, that dynamic going on right now. That that'll tend to even itself out. You talked to Trey Nelson and Brian Alvisoa. I mean, did you feel now that Alvisoa we got to take a longer look at him, or did this deal just fall into your lap and St. Louis lost the goalie? Well, well, there was some other interest in in Nelson. Um, it was it was there was a combination of a couple things. It was it was um, we felt that. Um, that LB is uh, is is now or close to being now ready or close to being ready to being the number two, so we wanted to get a little bit ahead of it and, and try and get something for Anders. Um, I guess that's that's it. Those two things: proactive and him being close to being ready. You've uh, you have you had a very busy day today, and by your own admission, you're not looking to at this time move a bigger core piece. This obviously lightens your workload over the next two days. Are you pretty much done, or do you think that you're still going to be fairly active? Well, we have a big whiteboard, and I had a bunch of things this morning. I wiped off four or five of them. I'm not saying that we got four or five of the things done, but there's still a bunch of things up there. So, so JJ and me are still here. <laughs> no, there's, there, you know what? We got two days. I guess an advantage of doing of completing a day like today is that you have two days to dig down on some of the other stuff that may not be 
stuff that gets done at the deadline, but it, it, you get a little more, a better sense of where the teams are going, you know, for the for the summer. So we'll, we'll certainly be pecking away at that stuff, and and uh, and uh, you know, we we have some other things that we're looking at, and if we get them done, great. If not, you're you have end draft picks now. You're, you're still keeping the second for your, your own situation with the compensation. We don't have to decide that right now, but based on where we are in the standings, we'll, we'll, we'll more than likely push it to next year. Right. Right. Yeah, a lot of picks. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean we'll use them to, for drafting. Um, you know, we've, we, we, we look at the landscape, the, uh, uh, the cap landscape going forward. We look at where the cap's going to be, and we think we're going to have some decent opportunities to use these picks you know, to, to get some players. Um, and you know, on a smaller scale, we used a, a fourth round pick to get Eric Grye, but like there'll be little deals like that. There may be some bigger deals, but um, we'll see where the draft lies. We'll see, you know, we'll see what activity is around the draft and what players are available. But it gives you a little bit of flexibility. Peter, at this point of the season, do you feel you have a really good read on this team? Because you came in and you said you didn't know a lot of players. Do you feel now, at this point, that you kind of? How do you feel about what you have in the assets? I, I have, I have a, a, a better feel now than I did then, um, obviously. Um, you know, I, I really would like to see the whole team together. Like, I'd like to see the three centers, you know, because it really, it really opens up the wingers. Um, I'm going to see that eventually. Nuge is, is coming back shortly. Um, I'm not going to it. One of the other two doesn't get hurt again. Uh, the... Um, you know the D. Uh, it'd be nice to see it again with Clef in there, just so that you can, you know, you can get the proper pairs. And he'll be back a little later than uh, he'll be back uh, in and around the same time as Nuge. Um, but I do have a I do have a pretty good sense. I have a pretty good sense, um, and uh, I, you know, I've my uh, my uh, my ideas, my notions, uh, they're, they're a little more solidified. Is it frustrating that you didn't get a chance to see, or you haven't at this point got a chance to see the team together? Because I know that you know that that would probably give you a better sense of what you had if everyone was in. Well, lines. well, it's you know there's there's the, the, the silver lining to all of this is that we've got two young centers. Among other things, is we got two young centers that have played played against some heavy, heavy competition. But not just the last two games. The matchups have been tough for these guys. And these last two games, if you look at Connor and Leon, um, I mean, these are tough, tough games. They're going to benefit greatly. The other side is that if, if um, we have all three, we've got a better, a more mature player in, in Nugent Hopkins shouldering some of the load, and the other two are kind of able to little have a little more latitude on, on the matchups and that. So that, I would have really liked to have seen that. And then you can see that the wings and how they, because you got three talented centermen. Now that didn't, doesn't mean they wouldn't have put Leon up. But then you got, then you got three talented centermen that, that you can really see how the wings can, can flourish. So that, that's, that's disappointing. The D, I knew that the, the, the D need, is a work in progress. And, and, uh, but I was more disappointed in not seeing the three centers together. Speaking of being your six healthy defensemen after Schultz got moved, have you made a decision? Who's coming up from Bakersfield? Not yet, not yet. Um, we have uh, on Monday. There's uh, there's the uh, we'll probably do a couple of paper transactions. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure yet. There may be there may be a D here or there that that we may acquire um, to, to test drive, so to speak. Um, but I'm not sure yet. Stuff. Peter, regarding Anders Nielsen, was there, was there ever a time you thought he might? Be more than kind of on a one-year term, especially when he was playing great. Or did you always see him as sort of bridging the gap to? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, well, I, I I felt strong about uh, 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 Bossois. Just just from what I saw, I knew that that he's going to be ready in, in short order. It, that doesn't mean it didn't mean that I had uh, thought Anders was 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 a, a band-aid, so to speak. I mean, he, we scouted him and he had a good stretch and. He lost his confidence a little bit, but I, it won't surprise me if he goes on and has good success in the league. Um, but LB's play and, and uh, the fact that where we are right now in the standings, it just made that decision a little easier. So Teddy, how important was it to not retain the salary? Well, 
it was it was it was significant yeah it was significant we had we had deals that had us retaining salary we had deals other deals where we weren't retaining salary but i mean it makes a difference if you're going to have a tiebreaker okay. thank you. good thank you